Good evening everyone. Welcome to the official YouTube channel of Officer Sata 24-7. My name is Aman Jodh and today it's our second class related to the money laundering in which we are going to discuss the process and method of money laundering and then we are going to practice certain questions related to the same topic. Okay. So we have started this series from yesterday onwards at the 5.30 p.m. Monday to Saturday. Okay. So let's start the session with the term which is money laundering. So what is money laundering? We have discussed yesterday also that money laundering is simply a process of converting black money into white money. And what is black money? The money which is earned from the illegal source or from the criminal activities. Okay. So before starting the session or before moving forward to the session, let me know am I audible to all of you and the PPT is also visible. Are we good to go? And if you are new to the channel, then do to subscribe the officers at a 24 7 channel and, uh, and also press the bell icon so that you will get all the notification related to the upcoming sessions on officers at a 24 7. Okay. Now let me know am I audible to all of you and the PPT is also visible. Are we good to go? So we were discussing money laundering and we have, we have discussed the basic introduction of money laundering in the last class which is simply means converting the black money into the white money or we can define the money laundering as that money laundering is a process that criminals use in an attempt to hide the illegal source of their income okay so the source or the process by which the persons or criminals individually trying to attempt to hide their illegal money or illegal source of income from the eyes of the government and the officers also and the anti-money laundering officers. So by how they are uh, hiding this money, hiding this illegal source of money from the uh, authorities. Now by passing the money through complex and transfers and transactions. Now we have discussed that there are three stages in money laundering that is placement, layering and integration. When we are talking about layering in which we maintain or we create a complex network of transactions. So it is talking about that when a criminal is trying to hide his or her illegal source of income then this person uh, try to create a complex network of transactions or transfers or through a series of businesses the money is cleaned of its illegitimate origin and made up to appear as the legitimate business profit. So what we are saying that a criminal is trying to convert his black money or his illegal source of money into the white money or in the legal source of money. Now how that criminal is performing this task by creating a complex transfers or transactions in the financial system after that investing that amount of money in the series of businesses they are investing in the diversified sector and different different sector because this is a risky stage the initial stage of the money laundering is very risky because in this stage you are entering your black money into the market or into the financial system so these are the mainly risky stages the initial stage okay so uh, through investing in different different businesses to creating complex network and transactions what we have done we have cleaned the money which was known as the black money and we have converted the illegitimate origin of that money to the legitimate business profit now this process is known as money laundering okay this process is known as money laundering now what are the stages of money laundering or how money laundering works so first of all there are three stages of money laundering that is placement layering and integration so when we are talking about money laundering how it occurs or how we can convert black money into white money so the initial entry which is known as the placement stage of the money laundering this is the first stage it is the initial movement of an amount of money which is earned from the criminal activity into some legitimate financial network or institutions okay now simply we can say that whenever you are entering or you are trying to start the money laundering the first stage you have to be a risk placement so the placement stage represents the initial entry of the dirty money or dirty cash or proceeds of crime into the financial system okay we are entering we are initially entering the dirty cash or the proceeds of crime into the financial system now in this stage the criminal risk relieves himself of holding the guardian large amount of cash and the money is placed into the legitimate financial system so the criminal person is depositing or investing or entering his money in the financial system now this is a very critical stage or we can say this is a very tough stage for the money launders because 
the cash you are entering into the financial system that is a dirty cash or it is a proceeds of crime so this is this initial stage will be very risky stage because when you are entering your fund in the financial system there is a chances of uh, suspicious transaction which can be identified by the officials in the financial system so this is the stage placement which is the initial stage or initial entry of the dirty cash now layering is the continuing transfer of money through multiple transactions forms investments or enterprises to make it virtually impossible to trace the money back to its illegal origin so in the layering stage what we are doing we are trying to create a complex network of transaction complex network of transactions so that the money will not be easily identified by the officials so we are transferring money through multiple transactions through multiple forms through multiple investment or in enterprises through multiple enterprises we are converting the money in the investment because it will be virtually impossible to trace the money that in which which sector the person has invested the money so it is hard to identify or it is hard to trace the money which is created a complex network of transaction that is the second stage and the layering third is the final stage that is known as integration is when the money is freely used legally without the necessity to conceal it any further so when you are capable of using your asset or your money legally in the country without uh, hiding it from the officials that is known as integration so in the integration stage this is the final stage where the money is returned to the criminal from what seems to the legitimate source so from the criminal source of earning it comes to the legitimate source of earning this stage is the final stage and known as integration now having placed this initially as a cash and layer through a number of financial transaction the criminal proceeds are now fully integrated into the financial system and can be used for any purpose there is no uh, suspicious transaction will be found in found in the integration stage for example you can create your purchase of property you can purchase a certain property you can purchase a jewelry you can purchase a high end automobiles you can purchase or you can start a certain business on the name of yourself so this is the personal assets you are creating in the integration process or the integration stage in which you do not have to give or you do not have to uh, make sure that the officials will find out your investments because here you have created a legal source of income by creating a complex network of money in the layering stage okay so this is how we can convert the black money into the white money or this is how money laundering works clear now next is methods of laundering are how many methods of the methods are there which we are using in the laundering so first is loan payment methods of laundering first is loan payment so repayment of loans or credit cards with the illegal proceeds is a type or is a kind of method of a laundering so first when you are repaying your loan or you are repaying your amount of credit cards with the illegal proceeds that is the process or that is the method of doing laundering in the country now next is gambling purchase of gambling chips or placing bets on sporting events that is the second method by which you can uh launder your money from black to white okay by investing in the gambling now currency smuggling the physical movement of illegal currency or monetary instruments over the border so you are doing currency smuggling this is also a type of investment or this is also a type of uh, method by which you can convert your black money into the white money next is currency exchanges when we are talking about currency exchanges you are purchasing foreign money with the illegal funds through foreign currency exchange so when you are do you know if you deposited whole amount in the banking system there will be a anti money laundering officer who is uh, monitoring your accounts who can find out that this is a suspicious transaction so you are not able to deposit the whole amount in the financial system now what you can do you can repay your loan amount or credit card payments with the, with the illegal money second you can invest your illegal money in the gambling sector third you can invest your illegal money in the currency smuggling or th fourth you can invest your um, uh, criminal money in the currency exchanges by uh, purchasing the foreign money from the foreign exchange okay so these are the certain methods which can be used for the laundering under the money laundering 
I hope the process and the methods of money laundering is clear to all of you and the money laundering itself is also clear to all of you okay now let's start with the some certain practice related to the same topic so the first question is asking about now each and every person who is present in the session they have to give the answer whatever option you think that is the right answer you have to give the answer we will check and I will ask in the end that how many answers you have given correct now which of the following is a correct statement first statement is asking which of the following is a correct statement first is as uh, first option is saying smurfs travel from bank to bank withdrawing cash from the atms second smurfing is a way to avoid triggering or reporting thresholds third smurfing requires an insider at a financial institution the smurfers are dead people whose account have been taken over by the money launders now which of the following statement is correct or true regarding the small force a b c or d which of the following will be right option let me know So first statement is saying when the smurfers travel from one bank to another and withdrawing cash from the ATM that is a smurfers or that person is known as a smurfers. Second is saying smurfing is a way to avoid the triggering or reporting threshold. It means simply if for example I am earning a certain amount of money and I am eligible for the liability to pay to government under the income tax act. Now I am hiding that amount of money okay and i am hiding that amount of money so that i do not have to pay the income tax to the government of india so second option is saying that is the smurfing third option is saying smurfing requires an insider person at a financial institution that if you want to do the smurfing you require an insider person to do the financial institution i think you all have heard about the insider trading in the capital market when we are talking about the insider trading what does it means it means when a uh, person or we can say the selling and purchasing of a security on the basis of its internal information is known as insider trading. Now the same thing is happening here. We are saying that when an insider gives you the information that how you can do the smurfing, that is the smurfing. Fourth option is saying smurfers are the dead people whose account have been taken over by the money launders. Now it is obvious that D option cannot be correct because the persons who have died the persons who have dead their account cannot be taken over by the money launders the amount will go to the rbi or to the nominee itself okay so the right answer will be here is very good both are saying b so right option is being that it's morphing is a way to avoid triggering or reporting thresholds okay so right answer will be your b option correct second tipping off is a term used in money laundering measures what does it mean tipping off we can simply understand the meaning of this word by giving a tip we give a tip to a certain person about any activity so what does tipping here means is it bribing to investigation authorities by the criminals second thing information given to investigation authorities by an insider third is monitoring of suspicious account transactions Fourth is informing the customer that their accounts are under monitoring for suspicious activity. Now, which of the following is tipping off means under the money laundering? A, B, C, or D. Let me know what will be the right answer. And again, those candidates who are live in the session, do like the session and also share with your friends and colleagues who also want to uh, qualify the certification exam of AML KYC officer. Okay. Am I saying A? Okay. What about rest? Patnaik is saying D, Mangesh is saying D, very good. It is simple, we are talking about the tipping off. It means you are giving a tip to someone. Na? So right answer will be D option that the insiders informing the customer that your account is under observation or under monitoring for the suspicious activity. So what is here, uh, we are saying that when a bank knows or anti money laundering officer knows or they have a suspicious doubt on a certain transaction that this can be a money laundering. 
so what they are doing they man, uh, they have your account under monitoring under investigation they are checking that it is actually a suspicious transaction or not to check or to confirm that this is a money laundering or not so if someone is giving you the information that your account is under monitoring or under observation for your suspicious activity now this is known as tipping off so right option will be d third what are the principal sources for terrorist financing what are the principal sources for terrorist financing a b c or d private funding donations state financing all of the above so when we are talking about terrorist funding or oh sorry financing when we are talking about terrorist financing so principal sources by which you can do the terrorist financing is private funding donations or legitimate uh, transfers or state financing or all of the above what will be the right answer Mangesh is saying D. Okay. What about rest? Correct. All of the above is right because all are the principal sources for terrorist financing. Whether it is a primary, uh, private funding, donations, or a state financing, all are the sources of terrorist financing. Right answer will be your D. Next. Layering under money laundering refers to, so the second stage under the money laundering refers to which of the following option, distinguish origin of initial deposit through multiple transactions, distinguish origin of initial deposit through multiple transfers, both A and B or none of the above. Now what is layering under money laundering refers? A, B, C or D. We are talking about the second stage in which the complex network of transactions will be created so that it will be hard to identify where the money is going. Now what will be the answer of the fourth question? Raj is saying A, Patnaik is saying C. Okay, so right answer is both, both A and B are right answer, distinguish original of initial deposit through multiple transaction or distinguish origin of initial deposit through multiple transfers. So both are true, both are correct because in particular layering stage what we are doing, we are trying to create a complex network of transactions or transfers. We are transferring money into different different sectors, we are investing money into the different different sector. So both option is true that the fourth uh, question's answer will be your C option. Okay, next. A real estate dealer purchased a 5 crores property for rupees 3 crore. The actual value of the property is 5 crore but he has purchased the property for 3 crores and secretly passed the balance to the owner of the property. Okay, he has paid the 3 crores amount secretly to the owner of the property. The actual amount of the property or the value of the property was 5 crores. Now after holding the property for some time, the dealer sells the property for its true value of rupees 5 crore. So what he did, he purchased the 5 crores value property in 3 crores and pay the amount secretly to the owner of the property and he had hold the property for certain period of time with himself and after a certain period he has uh, sold or he has sell the property at the actual value of the property that is 5 crores. Now this way of money laundering is known as, is it a structuring, is it refining, is it value tampering or is it smurfing? What will be the right answer? It can't be the smurfing because we have discussed in the further in the earlier questions what is a smurfing means. Okay, so it can't be the D option. It can be A, B, or C. Now, what will be the right answer for the fifth question? A, B, or C. Mangesh is saying C. That is value tampering. Okay, you can easily understand the uh, question. You can easily identify the answer of this question by reading just a question. So what we are saying that there, uh, the questions will be basically on the logical thinking, on the practical questions. It can be a fine, fine, 
part of the case study also so what you have to do you have to do the logical thinking you have to read the logically whatever concept you are reading for the aml and kyc certification do try to understand logically about the concept okay very good so right answer will be value tampering because this person has done the value tampering and paid the amount in the secretly to the owner okay so right answer will be c now let me know out of five questions how much you have given right answer so those candidate who are also preparing for jib and cib exams so the complete bilingual and complete english medium batch is available on under 247 application you can purchase from there or you can visit the under 247 application you can where you can find the jib cib courses and all bank promotion exams courses also these are the paid classes which will be available for you in which you will get all the recorded sessions also of the live class Now to enroll in this particular batch, you can use a certain code that is Y four nine six. If you purchase these batches from our twenty four seven application, you will get seventy eight percent discount on the MRP. Okay. After that, if we are talking about mock test or test pack, there are two test pack available for CIB and GIB. In which CIB you will get fifteen hundred question, in GIB you will get fifty plus test. And to enroll in these test packs, you have to use the code Y four nine six S. This is the code for the test pack. e-books or mock test if you are purchasing from under 247 and if you are purchasing a certain batch then you only have to use the y496 for the maximum discount okay mangesh got 3 uh, patnaik got 4 very good that's a good score so let us let's end the session and we will continue the same session with the next topic of your aml kyc certification course tomorrow at the same time 5:30 pm okay so thank you all for joining the session and if you are new to the channel do subscribe the channel and press